Hello and welcome. In this coding exercise, we continue our discussion of generative adversarial networks and the evaluation techniques and metrics. In this exercise, we introduce the Frechet Inception Distance or FID score. Let's get started. The Frechet Distance is a distance metric that is best fit for curves, polygons, and it is perfect for pattern matching and shape matching. It doesn't require the two curves to be identical, it allows them to be within a given approximation range from each other. As an example of this, if you are going to walk your dog outside, you have a leash and the dog is on the leash. It is allowed to be in the same path with you, but it can also go on its own path as long as the leash allows for it. The shortest leash that is going to allow you and your dog to walk on the same path on the same curve without diverging from each other is the minimum Frechet distance. This is the intuition behind the Frechet distance. The real intuition behind using it for generative adversarial networks and their evaluation is that even though that we have studied the inception score in the previous lecture, it is found to be inferior to the Frechet inception distance because it doesn't take into account the statistics of both the real image and the generated image. When I talk about the statistics, I mean the average, the mean, and the variance, which define almost any statistical Gaussian distribution. The Frechet distance or the Frechet inception distance is designed to allow to study the mean and the variance of both the generated images and the real images using the inception network. Unlike the inception score which uses the final output of the inception network, in the Frechet inception distance, we are going to use the last layer or the second to last layer before the last output in the inception network. That means we are using the inception network as a feature extractor. A very common concept in deep learning is called representation learning. It was found that in deep architectures such as AlexNet, VGG, ResNet and Inception Network, some particular layers are valid as feature extractions because all of the convolutional layers in the network, they learn different features such as curves, corners, edges and so on of the input image. And then they keep on accumulating this knowledge in a hierarchical topology from the lower layers up to the higher layers in the network till we arrive at a flattened vector which is a valid feature representation that maximizes the intra-class difference and minimizes the inter-class difference, meaning that images for the same object will have similar features and images from different objects will be very far from each other according to this feature representation. You can think of it as similar to PCA or principal component analysis for feature reduction where we try to project the input features to different coordinates that try to maximize the difference between the features and allow us to have linear decision boundaries between the classes. So the idea of Frechet inception distance is that we are going to use the statistics of the mean and the variance of the features learned by an inception network on both the real images and the generated images. And then we calculate the Frechet distance between these using these statistics. Let's put it into a mathematical formula. Here we have the mean mu r, which is the mean of the real images, and mu of j, the mean of the generated images. Of course, here I say the mean of the feature representation of these images. We subtract them and then we have the square product of uh, mu r and mu j difference. And then we have a new operator, tr, which is the trace operator. It allows us to take the sum along the diagonal of a matrix. And since this operator is applied to the variance, the variance here is taken for the representation of the real images and the generated images. So because we know that the variance matrix is diagonal, we take the sum along this diagonal. Then we take the product sigma r multiplied by sigma j. And then we take the square root multiplied by 2 and subtract from sigma r plus sigma j. A very simple equation, it gives us a scalar value at the end which is a distance the Frechet distance between the generated images and their representation 
and the real images and I mean their representations using the mean and the variance of the feature representation learned of the inception network. Let's see how this can be applied using PyTorch. You can find the notebook associated with the section materials and it will have the title evaluation metrics FID score and of course the source where the source code is being benchmarked on. So we need a mechanism by which we take the output of the second to last layer in the inception network. The code over here defines a new partial inception network that inherits from torch.nn.module and then it initializes the pre-trained inception version 3 network and it defines the layer with the title mixed underscore 7 c which is actually the output from the last block of the inception network just before the final layer or the output layer and then it defines a hook because by default and I ran into this error a hook that allows the PyTorch internals to give you the output of this internal block directly when you pass the inputs through the forward method it is a syntactic sugar so that you can apply the output on an intermediate layer of the network then inside the forward path we pass the inputs through the inception network and that will activate all the outputs we extract the output we're interested in which is self.mixed underscore 7c underscore output and put it in a variable activations and this output will have the shape n with the number of patches multiplied by 20 48 channels by 8 by 8 and then we need to reduce that to 1 by 1 so that we have only 2048 or 2048 which is actually an ideal representation vector for any image that passes through the network you find several concept in AlexNet and VGGNet and ResNet and so on so in order to reduce the dimension we use a average pooling 2D we pass the activations through the average pooling we pass the activations through the average pooling of kernel size 1 by 1 and then we view the output vector the output matrix or tensor using activations.view with the first parameter saved for the batch size and then 2048 which is the number of features in each sample or each image then we return the outputs and start creating a new object of this partial inception network and define a method FID score which will perform the actual calculations of the Frechet inception distance. So unlike the inception score we did in the previous lecture, in this one we will have both the real images and the generated images passed to the FID score method. We accumulate the results or the representations of both the real and generated images in two lists real underscore activations and gen underscore activations we loop over the number of steps in the data set given for simplicity the number of steps here will be one because I'm passing at a later step only one mini batch but I encourage you to try with larger samples and see if it is computationally feasible because technically what I found through these two exercises is that the evaluation matrix whether it is inception score or FID score, they are both computationally demanding and require a lot of computing resources and taking into consideration that you have to do these evaluations after every epoch or every 10 epochs of training the network which is itself is two networks, the generator and the discriminator so it is a little of a headache to add it with every exercise you are going to do it again but it is a necessary evil that you must work with because it gives you an objective evaluation metric for GANs unlike the subjective manual inspection of every image that is generated by the network we look over the number of steps we define the boundaries for the mini batch the start and the end index we slice the arrays the real images and the generated images by these indices we pass them to variable to make them into PyTorch tensor with gradients then we pass them through the network and we'll have the feature vectors we are interested in we append them to the real activations and the generated activations list now we are ready to calculate the statistics the mean and the variance over these features vectors what we do is to stack the list into a PyTorch tensor and then detach it from the gradient because it has gradients as a variable or a PyTorch tensor variable so we need to detach it using the method detach 
and then convert it to CPU if we have been using GPU and convert it to NumPy so that we can perform the calculations we're using the NumPy API for mean and variance and trace operator it becomes straightforward from here applying the formula in the previous slides directly in terms of NumPy API using numpy.mean for the average, numpy.covariance for the sigma or the variance but note here that rho var equals false means that the rows will be on the horizontal side and the observations will be on the vertical side again you wrap our, your head around it because if you do rho var equals true that will have the opposite, the transpose of the matrix just give it a couple of tries to make sure that you're comfortable with this kind of visualization of the matrix in your head and then we subtract u2 from u1, mu2 from mu1 which is the mean from each other and we do the squaring by doing def dot dot product of the def twice because it is a matrix and squaring a matrix is not simply as just squaring every element in the matrix but you apply a dot product to the matrix so that you can get the square of it then you apply the dot product to the variance 1 and 2 and then you apply the square root using the scipy linear algorithm square root uh, matrix this way you will have uh, the square root applied correctly to the matrix and display equals false will allow you to return the errors if any and I have ignored it using underscore and sometimes the square root in this case will be a complex number with imaginary part we can get rid of it if it exists and we uh, do that using square root underscore product dot real which returns the real part of the imaginary object and then we apply the trace operator on the square root underscore product and finally we calculate the FID score using the terms we have just calculated in the previous steps so using the terms we have calculated in the previous steps we apply the numby to trace operator on the S1 the variance of uh, the real images numby to trace on S2 the variance of the generated images minus 2 multiplied by the product and score trace which we have just calculated and we sum the difference and return the overall FID score next I need to test this method on some real and generated images from our model so we get a batch from the train loader convert it to the device CPU or GPU and then reshape it to 28 by 28 repeat the RGB channels upsample the image 299 by 299 and do the same for the generated images by applying the generator on the fixed noise vector do the same steps and finally pass the real images and the generated images to FID score method and get the score and print it here we've got 140 please note here unlike the inception score in the previous lecture where a small value meant a bad generator model and a higher value meant a better model in this case the FID score, a small value near zero is the best. A larger value is bad. So they are opposite to each other. Don't be confused by that. Also one more thing, the inception, the freshade inception distance FID is more sensitive to variance. It means it will encourage you to have a better evaluation whether the images generated has a high variety of classes and objects in your data set. So it is actually even as recommended on Twitter by the inventor of the generative adversarial networks Ian Gottfellow he also thinks and believes that FID is superior to the inception score which he has contributed to the authoring of the paper of it himself Again if you are interested in reading more about this topic you will find the original paper as referenced on the screen the appendix A1 is the one concerned with the Frechet inception distance FID because the rest of the paper discusses a new technique for training generative adversarial networks and the FID score is only a secondary contribution of the paper so cut it short and get to appendix A1 if you are specifically looking for the FID you can also read the rest of the paper to help you understand better the other ideas and methods existing in the area of games I would like to share with you for inspiration a new paper published using deep reinforcement learning 
and generative adversarial networks together to teach in an unsupervised way uh, the computers to draw and paint from real images or uh, portray images and it is done completely unsupervised and if you scroll down here you can choose any of the images in this data set I would show you how it arrives at painting it and learning how to do doodles in a nice interesting way so this is an inspiring idea inspiring topic where it merges both reinforcement learning and generative adversarial networks to promote the unsupervised learning of such skills and it can be applied to robotics it can be applied to game rendering it can be applied to many potential ideas and the paper i believe is done by deep mind which is part of google alphabet i hope that was inspiring thank you and see you in the next lecture